Now in your lab section of any of the labs, if you click on this and scroll down to the bottom, what you're going to find is the MCO 455 final project and we've been doing this since winter of 2021. And it shows you how the interaction is supposed to work. And shortly we're going to be demonstrating this in different colors for the LCD such as green for this particular message coming up, red for this message coming up. So when we press various buttons like one, two, three and so on, these interactions are going to take place. Now down at the bottom here we have a link and you use this link to drag and drop the bin file into the Freedom K64 and then you're going to see exactly the interactions that are going to be shown next. When we first start up the LCD is off and the 4 digit display is off as well. When we hit the 1 key we're going to see arm alarm number 2 in green and alarm off number 4. If we press the 4 we're going to see the alarm is about to turn off and then it turns off. If we press the 1 key again, and this time we press 2, we're going to see alarm is arming, please leave now. It counts down from 10 until it hits 0. And then it says alarm is armed, motion sensing. Now if we do cause some motion at this point, it's going to say intruder has been detected in flash and alarm sounding and to shut this off we have to hit number three. Then we can also hit four to shut it off. So we're going to begin a new project by saying file new embed project and we're going to use from an example project a certain template. And we're going to go down here to embed OS5 empty project and we're not going to call it empty project, what we're going to call it is project and our name. And we do not want to initialize it as a git repository, so we're just going to uncheck this and say add project. We can see that the main code is very very small and what we're going to do is put in a structure here so we can understand where all the pieces are going to fit for the LCD, 4 digit display, and make them all work together as a unit. Now going back to labs, we can find here under the project, the project layout. What we can do is copy all of this and put it into Kyle Studio Cloud so that we have a structure to work with. So let's copy this and then go back to Kyle Studio Cloud. Since there's hardly anything here of worth, the only thing that we're going to actually use out of all of this here in the program that we've got is we're just going to cut this and put it where it goes, which is in our include section here. And the rest of the code we don't really need. So right now we've got everything set up, so we're just going to spread these out a little bit. And then we're going to flesh out all the stuff. So this is basically the structure that we're going to work with. We already have our programmers block. We're going to start adding to the include section. Now the first thing that we're going to do is work with the LCD. And what we're going to do is bring in the library for the LCD, and I'll show you how to do that right now. To add a library to any project such as this, we're going to go here to File. We're going to say Add Embed Library to Active Project. And it's going to bring up a requester like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to os.embed.com. And we're going to go here to Code. And we're going to type in Grove LCD RGB Backlight and do a search. And the one that we want here is this guy here, Chandler Matz. So we click on here and we say import into Kyle Studio. And then we go down here, select all, copy, and let's go back to Kyle Studio and we will paste it in here like this. Now when we say next, it's going to ask us to select and then we're always going to select under branches, whatever it's got here and say finish. When it's finished, we're going to have the grow backlight in here in the library and we're going to have grow backlight dot h and that's the one that we have to put into our include section. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here, we're going to type number sign include, double quote, and type g-r-o-v-e and you can see that it actually is ready to autocomplete if we just type here and it finishes off what we need to have. Now we also have to put in our hardware definition section here and what we have to do is say grove there it is there, backlight, and we can call it anything we want. I'm going to call it LCD, and then specify the pins, which are D14 and D15. And once we do that, let's just do a quick compile and make sure that we've got everything ready to go. And our build succeeded in preparing to run, but we've got absolutely nothing in the main line. But we know that everything we've typed in so far is indeed correct. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put some stuff into main to actually see if it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to see LCD dot print and we're going to put in hello world in double quotes. And don't forget, we need 16 characters all together. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we can put a couple spaces here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And let's just see if that happens. And once we do that, at the bottom of our main loop here, we're going to just have forever and just have it sit here. So let's run that and see what happens. We had hello world coming up and that was great. That's not what we need for our project. So let's take a look again at our final project and let's see what we actually have to put in here. We have to say arm alarm. That's one of our messages. So let's copy that and let's go back to our code here and put it into here. So if I go here, now arm alarm, now notice it's 16 characters. And if you remember when we saw this coming up earlier in the video, it was pretty much over to the right. So let's just make sure we've got it in the right place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that, that's perfect there. Now we also want to have the other message coming up. So let's just copy that, make life easy on ourselves and paste it in here. And the other message we want, if we go back, is alarm off and a 4. And let's back that up a little bit and move this over just once. So everything should line up. Now the problem you're going to run into here is that it's going to say this and it's going to say that, but where is it going to say it? And so some of the things you got to remember about LCD is you have to say LCD dot, and then we want to position it. Now we can take a look after LCD dot and it gives us all of our options. Do you want to clear? Do you want to locate? Do you want to print? Or do you want to set RGB? So we want to locate because we want to put it on the top row, which is this guy and in the left column. So we'll put a semicolon here. And then also after this next one, we want to copy and paste this because we don't want to type a lot. So let's just copy this. And on the next line down here, what we're going to do is just paste that in. And we're going to say locate 0, 1 because we want it on the next row. Now some other things that we need to do also in here is to change the color. So let's go back and see what color we need to have here. And the color that we need here is green. So if we go back here, we're going to have to put in a color. LCD dot and then we want to do the set RGB. So we can type in set RGB, up bracket, and to make it green, it's very simple, 0x00, no red, 0xff, because we want it totally green, and we want to put in 00, because that's all we want is green. And we're deploying the verify, and there it is. And we got exactly what we wanted to have coming up on our display. Now let's go up and see how we can make things a lot easier for ourselves by copying and pasting. So right now we've got one that's alarm on. So let's copy that. Let's go underneath and let's paste it. But we want one now called alarm off. And it's going to be a little bit different. And what we can do is take all of this code here. Copy that. Control V. And make this alarm off. So for our alarm off, which is down here, alarm is about to turn off. So let's grab that. Alarm is about, copy that. So we're just going to go in here, alarm is about to, thing is going to line up, and to turn off. And the only other thing we have to worry about is our color. So let's see how we figure out our color. Now for the fourth message on our LCD, it's supposed to be purple. And we can go to lab 5, page 4, and see that purple is actually an 80, 0, 0, 80. So we can change this to 80 here. Make this a 0, 0, and change this to a 0, x80. But at this point, what we want to do is we want to take a look at this, and then this, and as we put more stuff on, we want to sort of circulate around and take a look at all of our messages to make sure all of our messages that we're going to have coming up in our project are OK. For each message that we're going to have coming up in our LCD, we want to have a function prototype. And we also want to have the function definitions for these that include the color and the actual message. The other thing that we want to do also is to have a test mainline here where we can take a look at each message coming up. So let's see what's going to happen as our program is running. Arm alarm, alarm off, alarm is arming, alarm armed, intruder detected in white, intruder detected in red, alarm sounding, alarm disarmed, and finally alarm is about to turn off. Right now we have function prototypes and function definitions for all of the things that are going to go to our LCD display. The next thing to do is actually have a function that's going to count down from 10 to 0 on our four-digit display. To make things work on our four-digit display, what we need to have 
is the actual library for that. And we're going to say add embed library to active project. We're going to go to os.embed.com. We're going to go to code. And we're going to search for digit display. And of all of these places here, we're going to go to seed digit display because they are the actual company that manufacture this device. We're going to say import into Kyle. We're going to select all, copy, and we're going to go back to here and paste this in. And then we're going to say next. And as before, we're going to select whatever's under branches, which happens to be default this time, and say finish. At this point, we've got digit display here where we've got our .h file and we've got our library down here. Okay, the first thing we have to do now is put in our digit display .h include. So let's put that in. And once we've done that, we also have to tell it where we physically connect to that. And we're going to use the word segs here to indicate that in D2, comma, D3. And the next thing we want to do is go to our main here and put in some code to actually count down from 10 to 0. For unsigned, if you count down to 0 and you say greater than or equal to 0, everything is an unsigned number is greater than or equal to 0 makes an infinite loop. So one of the things we have to do here is treat the last one here, segs.write, when it comes out of the loop, which will have zero, we're going to have to say segs.write i, and then treat that zero case as something special. So we'll say wait 1.0 seconds, segs.clear, because otherwise it's going to count down and the zero is going to stay there. And we want it to actually count to zero, wait one second and clear. So let's run our program and see what happens. So we can see it counting down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And when it hits zero, it should actually put zero up for a second and clear, which it does. The only thing that we may want to adjust is actually the brightness that's there. But code that we've got here does work, and we can now turn it into a function. Now let's call this seg counter void. And once we do that as a function prototype, we're going to copy everything except the semicolon here. Copy that right to the bottom here. And we're going to go up here and copy everything from our main line now. Control C. We're going to copy all this and we're going to paste it right into here. And at this point, we should be able to call it up with just one simple function call. So this way it's going to count it up and do exactly the same thing as it did before. And you can check this out if you like. One of the advantages of actually doing functions is that we can put a number of functions one right after the other to provide the kind of interaction that we've already seen. For instance, alarm arming is going to say, arming alarm, please leave. Say counter is then going to count down. And then afterwards, it's going to say alarm armed. So let's run this and just see what happens. So alarm is arming and it's counting down. When it hits zero, it's going to go to the next function, which is alarm armed. Arm, arm, motion sensing. So that's a big chunk of the code that we need already.